Welcome to this behind the scenes look at bringing Lego to life. I call it bringing Lego to life. Everything is awesome. You know, playing the most average, non special, non talented guy in the world with no thoughts ever required some real acting chops. I don't know what I'm doing. And I did my own stunts. Ah! Ow. Ah! Ow. 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 Thankfully, there was a great team to support me. And that team starts with Phil Lord and Chris Miller, the directors. They told me there are no small parts, just small actors, which is why they hired me, a tiny plastic actor with zero experience. I never have any ideas. <laughs> Some days were very hard, which you can see here with them reclining in their air conditioned theater, but it wasn't all fun and games and plush chairs. They had lots of stressful decisions to make. I feel like there's some example, right, of like a, like a day when we're like really stressed out. Like should his, should his horns like go in like this or out like that? Like what color should the wizard's crocs be? Green or orange? Oh, I'm so stressed out. Yeah, real tough stuff, guys. But in this movie, someone had to design every set, every vehicle, and every character. And that person was production designer Grant Freckleton. Hello, Grant. How did you come up with my unique design? This face is so generic, it matches every other face in our database. Emmett was the first character we ever managed to design because in the film, he's not only the hero, but he's also meant to be the most normal guy out there. I'm just a regular, normal, ordinary guy. <laughs> We did at least 150 different hair designs before Emmett was actually happy. And he said, I want to be unique, I want to be original. And we had to like noodle with these two little nubules of so yeah, we did like 15 different versions. Chris and Phil loved the first version we ever did. It was Emmett that kept changing things. Come on, you don't get this on the first try. I'm pointing to my head, if it's not clear. My arms don't really move that way. Anyhow, let's stop talking about my hair and move on to anything else. Hey, how about how they created the story? When you start an animated film, you hire a team of storyboard artists who draw out the entire movie by hand, and you use it to see what jokes work. Is this working? Yes. Yay! What parts of the story don't make sense, and it's a really helpful process to just kind of get the movie to feel like the movie, but not look like the finished product. This represents the storyboard phase of the film. It's the first thing that we do when we're testing out an idea, so this is Emmett coming back from the real world. <laughs> Sorry, Street. The storyboard process has started years before animation starts. And so because of that, the actors aren't hired for the movie yet. And so all the crew members will get together and we'll get around the microphone and we'll do temporary voices for the characters. No, let Emmett try. His training begins now. No, let's not let Emmett try. I haven't had any training. That's OK. We'll start with lesson one. Trust your instincts. I don't sound like that. Anyways, eventually they cast real actors. Wow, look at this group. Welcome to my think tank. Getting to work with Chris and Phil is really easy. They're super quick and they're right there in the room with you, kind of creating alternative lines. If we're gonna spray everyone with a giant craggle machine, it's gotta look cool. It's so specific and quirky and weird. <laughs> you know, every recording session we did just kind of flew by. Total perfection. To play me, they hired Chris Pratt, the handsome megastar who plays Kirk in Star Trek. Wait, what's that? Oh, a different Chris. They hired a different Chris. So, wait, who's Chris Pratt? He's a hilarious comedian. Yep. Ah, I've got pigs! No, I need your help! What do you mean? No, ah! And he has a lot of warmth and sweetness and... He's a sweet man. And isn't there supposed to be a good cop in this scenario also? He can play kind of like a naive, somewhat of a dum-dum pretty well. Okay. Oh, but he's no dumb dumb in real life. Tell you what. Mm -mm. Smart guy. Yeah, let's give her a shot. I like it. I think I get it. I think I do. I know Emmett has this reputation of being difficult. Yes, that's me. I actually got along with him really, really well. He came in and essentially told me exactly what to say and exactly how to say it. Man, he's such a cool guy. Looking for creative inspiration, we headed off to the place Lego was born, the fictional fairy tale land of Denmark. Oh, how's that? Okay, uh, yeah, I'm being told Denmark is a real place. Denmark! Ha <laughs> ha! 
As part of the research and pre-production of the movie, we went to Denmark, mostly to go to Legoland and eat their strange hot dogs that they have there. French hot dogs. Cheers. I'm gonna eat all my food like this from now on. <laughs> We're in Billen, Denmark, uh, headquarters for Lego, and it's really like going to Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. Did you have this? I didn't have it, I just remembered. Dan is like the greatest producer because he has tremendous respect for the filmmakers, gives us a lot of freedom to create, and it's just like incredibly supportive. The main purpose of our trip is actually here to show the first animatic to LEGO Corporate. Oh, I love it! <laughs> and this is a test of Emmett doing an audition, actually, with Chris and Phil. I don't know what I'm doing! Maybe try it bigger? I don't know what I'm doing! No, no, like bigger, like a fat guy bigger. I don't know what I'm doing! What about backwards? You ain't been the one, one not. That's nice. Yeah, that's good. Then we went to the Lego factory, where I was reunited with all my brothers and sisters and- Oh my! G-O-S-H! Why are they broken? This is very disturbing to look at! When we toured the Lego factory, we toured it with Emmett. He saw where he was born in the plastic mold machine that squirted him out. It's very moving, seeing him reunited. It's kind of yeah. sad. Yeah. He kept trying to engage and relate to the plastic mold machine. Right. And it was unfortunately not not very expressive. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello. Good day, sir. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Whew. Can you maybe slow the machine down? That factory is super, super awesome. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool. It's filled with robots. It is filled with robots. <laughs> they have little robots that come around and they like wait for you if you're in their yeah. way. And then the robots know how to drive yeah. and know how to stop for pedestrians. Who are you two? What are your robot serial numbers? It's really inspiring to be here because you just remember why you fell in love with the idea in the first place and the extensive variety of possibilities that come out of Lego bricks. I never built anything according to the instructions. It was just like, great, dump the pieces out. I'm like taking pictures, just anything that's new that I haven't seen before or classic that we've forgotten about. I'm like, hey, is there any way we can work this into the movie? I have that sweater. Animal Logic uh, is a uh, pretty famous animation studio that did uh, the original Matrix. And they're Australian, so we get to hang out in Sydney. So that's pretty it's cool and awesome. Everything is awesome. That is where the movie was animated. By koalas. Just kidding. By people. Highly skilled technicians who deserve better than that joke. It was very important the animators like me, so I casually tried to fit in. Plus, I brought them overpriced coffee. That's $37. Worth it. Some people say the MVP of the Lego movie was Chris McKay. Now, I know what you're thinking. He gave me 20 bucks just to say that, but it doesn't make it any less true. And now, I'm super rich. He moved to Australia to oversee the animation while we stayed back in Los Angeles and... Basically, just kind of yeah. partied. <laughs> and it was wonderful having somebody there whose opinion you trusted. It would have been impossible to do without him. Oh, cool. But Chris was just one of the hundreds of people there who made the Lego movie awesome. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when we're part of a team. Everything is awesome when we're living our dream. Man, I need to stop saying awesome and queuing up that song. Anywho, we're talking folks who made the effects, uh, the explosions, and all the amazing vehicles. One of the things that Emmett said that he's been really, really excited about this week is he's got to see some little vehicles and some things that have just kind of blown his mind that he has never seen anything like this steampunk pirate ship and some of the spaceships and things in his life before. Emmett was pretty pumped about the, the vehicles in the movie. Awesome! 
he didn't know the motorcycle was going to be unveiled. We had the camera rolling, we said action, Emmett saw it, and that is actually his natural reaction. Whoa! Jump on! We often don't just sit down and start putting bricks together. It depends on what we're designing. Something larger like the sea cow, we had an artist in Los Angeles who drew dozens of sketches before we actually even put two bricks together. We built a system that really utilises real Lego bricks. And we've actually used that system for all of our modellers. One of the things that we're really positive about is the fact that the, the film itself is not a cheat. It's a real Lego block film. Like, all of the things that you see on screen are 100% Lego blocks. When I finally saw myself on the big screen, all I could focus on is how big my face was. Why didn't anyone tell me it was so big? I think Emmett, you're seeing his head so big on screen, it fills the whole screen. He was quite worried about how his complexion was coming across. He has been very coy about it. He sort of always has his head in his hands. <laughs> well, I've never seen Emmett more excited than on the day when we were doing extras casting. I am so pumped up! They think if it were up to him, there would be nothing but female construction workers. Can I get a couple lerps over here? Hey, thanks, Gail. I was surprised at how many mermaids he tried to get into the film, because there's only one in the script, but the day of casting, there were so many beautiful mermaids on set. He demanded that we put all of them in the movie, and we had to have one of our producers sit down and talk to him and explain that it's just not in the budget to have 25 mermaids. Well, thanks, guys. With our mermaid budget blown on so-called important things like animation and movie stuff, we headed back to California. We had to get the word out on how awesome our movie was. No, everything is awesome montage that time. Everything is awesome. And there it is. Now that the film is complete, it's time to unveil our piece de resistance to the entire world. It's been kind of a crazy, crazy trip. When you see it, you're like, wow, it's incredible. It's a marvel to look at. There's a lot of humor working on a lot of different levels, a lot of laughs. It kind of got swept up in the story immediately. Oh man, it's the best. Coming through, Oop. down here. Ooh, watch your foot. No stepping on the movie star. <laughs> Woohoo! It's starting. Okay, shh. You should just be still. What are you two losers talking about? What? what? Oh, nothing. Anyway, hey guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the sequel. Shoot, I forgot the popcorn. You are so disappointing.